we're going to compare rangefinder versus GPS versus pacing it out over nine holes, three holes, three holes, and three holes of each. Now I use the voice caddy. I use the voice caddy L5 now. I'm getting another couple in, but uh, this one is pretty good. And to clear the water is like 172, straight to the pin. We're looking at 336. And to that bunker, yeah, we're looking at about 247, 250 not to go into that bunker. So you can use this to shoot over water. You can use it to shoot at the pins. You can use it to shoot edge of bunkers. So if we want to carry this bunker in front of us with a, with a fader, you want to hit that at least 220 because it's 211 to clear the to clear the bunker. So we're going to decide now three, four iron or seven wood. So I've settled on the seven wood just because of plain confidence. Now I'm going to tear it up straight down the grain here. We don't want to tear it up into the grain and uh, when you tear it up into the grain the club digs in whereas here it just skims over do you see that just pick the most confident club off the tee and let's go at that bunker we're never going to reach it into the breeze so we we've hit a we've hit a perler there's that bunker right up there we're very safe. I don't know. I mean, according to this uh, watch of mine, it's gone 210. So it's a good opener. I'm fine with that. It's into the breeze. It's left me the 123 yard club. And then what I do with this rangefinder, shoot the pin, of course, because we want to know that distance. And the front of the green that I can see is 90. And the pin's 123. So we've got like, we got like 30 yards from the front of the green to the pin. 123, we're going to go on the first hole. We're going to go pitching wedge. We're not warm. So we just grip down a little bit on it. We know it's 123, but I figure there's always there's always five or six yards behind the hole. And we're not going to hit this past 130 into the breeze first hole of the day. Perfect. Now players, what we can do from here is that's a 123 yard shot, okay? So we had 123 yards, we've hit the pitching wedge into the bridge sure so we have to factor these things in with but you can use your rangefinder to actually establish kind of your carry distances because if you watch the way of the player whiteboard video you watch the stroke shaved system why you know whiteboard video you'll start to see that one of the key elements is you everything about these systems is you so you have to know your distances and it's very key because as soon as you can hit the ball airborne often you want to know your exact distances you're hitting the balls. If you don't, how can you gauge? How can you judge? Now, look over here, okay? Like I said, 90 yards to the front edge and we had all this green. I think the pins are going to be in the back today because they, they aerated the front. Yeah, there's the pitch mark. So we know that with that kind of swing with a pitching wedge, from 123, we can hit it like 122, 123. So that's our... That's the beginning of the range of shots we can hit. Be very honest with yourself that you are hitting the distance that you're hitting. You don't want to, you don't want to be lying to yourself because it doesn't help you. You have to be brutally honest. One of the most brutally honest ways is to get a, a GPS watch. Never lies. Hey, Pam, what a caddy. Hey, birdie and tip. Hole one already, girl. No birdie, no tip. So according to my notes, players, from last night on the Google Earth, this green is 45 yards long, so we're going to take the range finder and shoot to what we can see. And what we can see is the pin at 213. The pin is 213, I'm guessing at the back because they've all been um, scarified on the front. So we're playing a pretty long course today. What's going to go 213? I think down breeze, 4 iron, see, but we might do a 6 just because the green's so big that we can just get it on, right? So the front edge is going to probably be 180 just to the front. I think we're going to go with a 6 iron. Leg hook. Just because I don't, if I catch a four real good, okay, so I have to move the camera a bit because I don't want to tear it up down grain. I'm tearing it up, I mean, into the grain. I'm tearing it up down grain. So, I mean, middle of this green, we're probably looking at about, we're probably looking at about 190, 200. And I'm okay with that. I think I can do that with a six iron. Nice committed swing. Okay, we don't really want to be right on this hole, so let's see what happens with Tinai. On camera. When you, when you focus your camera on your target, you take the picture. That's with putting. So and as soon as we see that clear thing, for me, it's like the yellow line or red line on a video game on the ground. Like, like 
Tiger Woods. So if I can get the ball rolling on that line, I think we're going to be happy days here. So I'm going to probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, beautiful par, beautiful par. Let's go. What we can do right here, players, is from this tee box, we can take a look at the distance to clear. We're not going to worry about the water. We're going to clear the water. We're going to clear the bunkers. 212, the far end of this bunker, 230. And then to carry, to carry the rough that I can see between the bunkers there is 241. So I'm going to go a little left of that. That hedge in the back there is 388. The, 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 the tee, I mean the tree, Next to the road is 331 to the right of that bunker. So we want to go about 15 to 20 yards right of that bunker. Let's go driver. Now I'm teeing up on the right side because I mean it may fader. I don't mind a little fader on this hole, but you want to get the line right so you don't over fader into the water. So we've hit a draw off the toe. So it probably shouldn't go that far. Hopefully not in that bunker. I think we're going to be short of that bunker just because the strike was not great. But we'll take that. We now have a shot and I'll show you how to use the rangefinder to use it the rest of the way to a par 5 that you're not going to hit in 2. 98% of us are not going to hit par 5s in 2 on any given round. So let's temper the expectations. Okay, so what we can do with the rangefinder, the voice caddy L5, we can also shoot it back. We can shoot it back to the T. We're looking at 270. I get 270 back to the T box. On my watch is 266, so it's roughly accurate. You can shoot back to tees, pick something in line with the tee box when you tee off, and then you can remember to shoot back to it to get your distance. Now, I know that uh, bunker, 242 to carry, 227 to reach, 311. The pin's 311. We're gonna go with the seven wood players because the Confident Club, lots of space there. Thank you, Caddy. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Little seven wood here, straight at that bunker because it's gonna draw. So it's going to go left of it if it does draw. But if I hit it straight at it, I don't think I'm going to reach it, which is beautiful. Okay, well, we've gone right. That's a little new for me. I don't normally go right, but we had a plan and that's what happened. We got real lucky here. I could have been in a bunker and you don't want a bunker shot from 89 yards. You don't want that shot, okay? It's 89 yards playing 92 because of the uphill. To clear the front is going to be 77 yards. 77 to 89, we've got 12 yards, so we want to land this about 85 for sure. Of course, what's the point? The point is, you can use any device you want. You can pace it out, you can use a GPS, you can use a rangefinder. Find the thing that's going to help your game. You want to know your distance, you want to know how far the pin is, you want to know how far your targets are, how far can you hit the ball so you don't go in hazards. Watch the way of the player, whiteboard video, stroke shaved. This will all make sense. I'm leaving the house without pants on if I don't have my range finder. I've become so dependent on it. So it's also interesting for me to see how it works with just a watch or pacing it out like we used to do. I'm going to jam this putt. And I pushed it right. What a, what a magwish. It's okay, players. Now, players, uh, we have another option here. And the other option is a GPS watch. Now, I have an Approach S40 on right now. And you, I'm getting a shot scope soon as well. I'm going to try them all out. But now, this one, what they give you, I don't know if you can see it. I mean, it's not that great. But it's like 450-yard hole. And it's going to tell us the bunkers. What we want to know is... To clear that bunker there's a bunk on the left we're going to get to it is 224 to clear it is 262 what's next then the furthest bunker is 275 to get into and 292 to carry but our line i reckon is on the right edge of this previous bunker which is 224 to reach so to easily to clear that with 250 240 so i'm going to hit a three wood over left. here just middle of that bunker and fade it in Okay, we've skied it, but it's on the correct line, so it's probably going to go 200 something. Probably not going to be my best, but at least we're not in that bunker. That's the number one thing we want to avoid. What we can see with this thing, okay, it tells you a little number here. That only went 220, like I said. 
and it tells you the number as you walk up there so you can either jot that down or just connect it to your phone and this watch is going to track the whole distances of every shot sometimes when you hit one onto the green it may be confusing so you want to sometimes on approach shots just jot down the real number so that it's perfect the thing with the gps watch is the ego breaker so if you think if i look at that from the t there it said 451 i've got 223 left i'm thinking oh i've hit that 230 yards 217 that's 13 yard difference that's a big difference now we've got 223 to the hole we're going to go my jet we're going to go seven wood that's to center green 244 to the back edge and it looks like the pin is must be really sent you know i don't know it's, it pins probably at the back because i haven't used the the rangefinder we're only using this so we're going to go back edge 244 kitwa kitwa hit a terrible shot on the right side that players is going to be a drastic up and down as so, you as you walk players it should track your gps movement as well so as you can see it's going up as we walk and if you like this beautiful glove this is a beautiful glove from eagle empire um, it's a little polka dot one now i like these gloves because this one is soft but kind of kind of durable they have another paint splotch one a white one with black paint splotches which is really soft and luxurious for you western for you western cooler climate players i like the black paint splotch that you'll see in the pebble beach video here in thailand because it gets so sweaty and that thing's so grippy i love it get yourself an eagle empire right now great guy from canadia great place now you probably wonder okay so we don't have a range finder here how are we going to get the exact distance to the pin or to carry the bunker and make sure we don't screw it up so what you can do is click on the screen it gives you a whole view okay most of these things give you a whole view and you can move the pin around and i'm going to gauge the pin there i'm going to gauge this shot is about 40 40 47 48 yards and the bunker in front of me is 41 yards to clear so we're going to take a we're going to hit a 45 yard shot with a hasip hook with a 56 degree just a 45 yard shot it's playing uphill so we're probably playing to about 50. i have to just remember get it on the green not my best but it's going to work players it's going to work huh so we judge that to perfection players with a little chunk and a little chunk and spin shot and we've got that for the pass key never give up on the good times always believe in the love you share okay and uh, i've i've always been crazy and it's kept me from going insane now players it's better to be decisive than correct with this let's be decisive inside right commit to that what a day what a day what a beautiful day what a beautiful surrounding players a beautiful golf course and caddy no good that pin is at the back because they've scarified the green so if i were to move this pin onto the back it's saying 178 from right where i'm standing if i use the green feature with a pin movement 178 to the pin i think we're going to go bad jet we're going to go with an eight or a seven here because we know this is a 44 yard long like on the line we're on i don't want you know like to avoid missing left we've got 44 yards of uh, of green i don't think i'm going to commit to a seven do you know why i don't know myself but if you can tell me that would be great but i feel like i can commit to a firm i like to hit the ball hard that's just the way life is okay when i try control shots it's really difficult to control them so we're going to go right hopefully it draws a little because it's always best to miss right on this hole i mean for obvious reasons right edge baby draw in the cut okay a little draw on that there you're going to put in your club i don't know if you can see that that's the eight iron now we're going to walk and it's going to track the number player i might look i'm walking all over my putting line you know why because i just don't even care right like it looks like I don't care in the videos um, there's a reason for that and it's because I just don't I gave up attachment to all this stuff because it doesn't matter I'm not nihilistic I'm talking about removing the importance of a shot because as soon as you put an importance on a shot 
for no reason, that's when you get tense. Now, if I make this putt, I make a birdie. If I don't, I don't. I don't care. I'm looking at my spot. I'm going to trust my built-in stimp meter. But the key when putting is just let it go. Let the universe take it. Hit my line. It's a good putt. Haven't hit it enough, but it's a great putt. I just missed the, I miss hit it a little bit. But it's a good effort. I'm happy with it. It was online. And I just probably, you know. Okay, players, we've got uh, 509 on the watch. We're going to probably not hit this in two shots. Probably not, but we never know. Well, not like that. I mean, that's a really puffy shot. <laughs> I think I need to go see a pro. That was bad. Look where my divot is. So that means if my divot's there, I hit the ball on the crown here. Not great. You don't want to crown the ball, okay? I'm crowning. It's crowning. Now, players, here's a little insight you're not going to get for, for free from many places. So what I did on the Google, Google Earth is I figured out that tree that's at the path down there is about 20 yards space just to the right of it to be able to not go in the water. So we're going with the, going with the GPS on this hole and the water to reach it, 158 to reach the water. So we want to stay short of 158. It's 200 to carry it on the right. That's a stupid shot. Like there's no hero shot. That's a stupid ass shot. You're going to not miss correctly. You're going to hook it. You're going to chunk it into here, whatever. We want to go down there and we're going to go 159 minus about 15 to be sure we're not going in the water with down breeze. Pitching, because we're going to try hit it like a 140 something yard shot. And we have to pick our line really good here, okay? We have to pick our line really nicely. Now that's not where we want to go, a little left like that. But that's where we are. We, that's where we are. We have no choice. So it's a little toughy, a little toughy. We made it tough on ourselves with the tee shot there, but at least we're dry. As long as we stay dry on this hole, we have the chance to keep making the five. And if we take a six, guess what? It's a good nine. Nice day, beautiful sunshine. My caddy, I mean, look how she, every hole cleaning my divots, beautiful. So with the GPS, okay, what we can do there as well is we can also lay it up to, the nice thing about it, when you don't have line of sight, is you can lay up to the 150 yard mark, you can lay up to the 200 yard mark, the 100 yard mark. That's a beautiful thing about it is that you're not tied to having to see the, the actual pin or your target. It's just about getting the right line, which is like with anything. But I could, I could play both, but I do prefer the rangefinder. But I'm starting to see some value in this uh, GPS right now, besides for what I use it for, which is purely distance tracking. So how much have we left ourselves here according to the GPS? We've got 198 to the middle of the green, 177 to the front, and the pin is probably more like 205, 210. That's what it's telling me here to the back edge. We're on a downslope in the rough, okay? Ball below our feet. This thing's gonna to wanna to squirt way right. So I'm quite happy with going center green with something that's gonna go more like carry, let's say to be sure, we're gonna carry 190 just because of that downhill slope. I'm gonna go with leg cock. We're gonna go six iron. Now, I can't do four because four is never gonna get up there in time. We're on a downslope, we're into the grain. Four is gonna go bup, 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 into the water for sure. Six iron I like. We've got a wind off the right. We've got the green entrance there at 178, which a six iron can do. We down breeze a little bit. I think it's a good club. We're probably not going to get a draw going on this on this shot, but we can miss it right. We cannot go left. So it's it's helping us in that it's pushing us right, which is where we can miss. Now, if I can get this short right of this green, avoid that bunker, I'm going to be aces. OK, number one thing we don't want to go water. We don't want to go in a bunker 40 yards from the pin. So we're going to go rightage, maybe just, just like right up the guts of that, that green there and then hope for the best. Can it... That's probably one of my best shots of all time, but how far will it go? Oh, wow. Okay, that's, that's a lot better than I was expecting, but that's what happens when you have a good plan. I was going right up the guts somehow i managed not to fade it and i'm happy if i hit a little fader i'm going to be just short long putt or a chip lots of green to work with that's how we do it players but that's the planning 
right? So we planned kind of to do that, kind of. We had a good plan, we committed to the plan, and good things happen. When you don't have a plan, you don't commit, you, you know, bad things happen to you. So, and if you have a plan, but you don't commit to it, that's even worse than having a committed bad plan. I'm going to go at the little shadow of the pin there, players. We're going to get to a Hasek Proctiqua. We're going to go with a 56. I feel like the rollout is more. I think that on the downslope, the rollout's going to be good. Now, if you didn't hit that shot I hit, you're going to have to lay it up here to 100 or something you're comfortable with. That's an easy shot to do. I took on the difficult shot because I feel I can do it. And I did do it because I, I feel I have the skill level, the experience, the understanding of my trajectory, my ability on certain slopes, right? So if that ball was like really below my feet, I probably wouldn't hit the shot. I'd probably just lay it up and try to scramble the par. Now we're here, luckily, and, and you've got to play your game. You've got to know how you can be or how attacking you can be. I'm going to land this about three, two yards over the fringe. Just like that, and it could be in the hole. No, because my caddy is no good. But, uh, okay, caddy very good. Caddy deity suit. Caddy deity suit. It's 375 hole from here, effectively. Scorecard, I don't know. Scorecard, tell Rai. Jump down, eh? Map it, map it, map it, map it, map it. No pam pam, no pam pam. I would say probably a seven wood. A seven wood or a three wood up beyond us. This is 375. We can go directly on the direct line there, straight ahead. I think I'm going to tee up this side to avoid the water on the right. Just get it out of the Okay, not our best shot. We've pulled it left, but you see, I did kind of set that shot up because I don't want to go right at all because I have a slight tendency to do a little push ski here. And then when you push ski into the water ski over here, the very important point, you're not crossing the hazard on the other side. You're crossing the hazard here because it starts there and then just fades. If you hit a big banana slice and land there, you may be able to argue you can drop the other side, but I'd have to drop here at the tee boxes so better left better left than in the water right i'm okay up there we've got a shot so we're here in the rough just about 12 yards off the fairway we've got a shot but we're not using our range finder or the gps so we've got the 100 yard marker there now i think to remember when you have a marker okay very big deal very big and this is a big mistake people make they look at it and they say oh i'm in line with the 150 so it must be about 150 you have to remember, it's not a straight line like this. It's like a, from the, from the hole, it's like a, a circular, as if, imagine there's a string attached to the pin and you're pulling that string around to wherever your ball is. So if I had to imagine a pendulum, a pendulum coming this way, I would guess that this is probably 150s over there. Pins in the back, we're probably going to add another 10. I reckon this is probably 163. 163, I'm going to check with the range finder afterwards to see how close I am. From this lie, gripping down, jet. We're into the breeze, we're gripping it down. Ball is above our feet, we have to grip down by default. By default, you're gonna lose some distance. We're into the breeze as well, and it's gonna move right to left, as best we know. Maybe this one should land like 160 and chase up a little bit. Yep, it didn't chase up as much, but that's a really nice shot. Just dead straight up the guts. Okay, a little bit too much. A little bit too much break in there. But we hit a good putt. We just picked the wrong line. Got a little Tabinski for the pass key. That's life. That's life in the fast lane, players. That's how we do it here. Millionaire's golf style. Okay, we're going to use pacing on this par three. Well, that's upside down. No wonder it looked good, a bit long. 173. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. We've got 169, but that pin's in the back. So let's add like eight yards. Now let's add 10 yards. We're going to go 179. And I'm going to guess that. I'm going to check with the range finder. 179. See, I've, I've moved it over the side. I, I, I thought that the angle there is not great for that hole. So I'm going to move it over here. 
and we're gonna put we got we're gonna guess 179 right 173 minus 5 with 168 169 plus 10 for the pin in the back into the breeze let's go leg jet because players i don't want to be long here either i mean it's such a big green just get it on the green i love a putt but we're gonna have to make pretty good contact yeah wow gotta get to a chiropractor and a physiotherapist can let's visualize okay we've been rushing a bit not visualizing let's visualize studio lines see straight up this strip of down grain grass straight up it like a bouse little short because I mean I don't know what I did you can see I clearly came way over the top way over the top it's like I'm hitting it back to Bangkok do you know what I'm saying huh so let's go we just go make a par girl so what you have to do is just calculate how to miss on this hole calculate the distance to the front edge there and be happy with front edge a four three putt four okay can happen is better then drop, hitting one in the water, you have to either drop at the tee box or at the drop zone. Drop zone, you're hitting back toward the water. At the tee box, you probably have a better chance. You're hitting three on, two putting four or five, three putt for a six. Think carefully, think carefully. Kitwalai. Kwatarai. One caddy. Okay, players, now oh, it's getting scorching hot out here. It looks nice and sunny and beautiful on the, on the video. And it is, and Caddy, I don't know, I don't know what you're smoking today. What did you smoke for breakfast? What did you smoke for breakfast, girl? I wish I had eyesight like a hawk. I guess that was the hole, but I wasn't sure. So we're going to go right. One Caddy, now. Nah? Okay, she's not thinking it's going to break much, but do you know what, players? I see a big-ass break. I see a big one right over her. Right over her, I see a big one. I, I'm not trusting. I'll probably be wrong, but I gotta go, I gotta go with the gut. My gut is telling me number one, I need to get to the toilet, and number two, this is easily a caddy length, right. So I'm gonna go about, I'm gonna look about a third of the way. There's a pitch mark over there I wanna go just right off. I'm gonna pick that spot and just hit a beautiful bash up the hill. I think it's gonna be slower than usual. Okay, I probably should have listened to the caddy. See? Okay. Okay. You're right. <laughs> what a beautiful par. That's a beautiful par, players. And we're going to take a par there into the breeze, surrounded by water. Yes, it's big. It's beautiful. That's life. You know, okay? Free bird polo. What a player go off to come. I created this brand out of the love for the players. It was all through requests of players that I eventually made it. Every item iterated three to four times, okay? Every item. We've got bore markers, we've got pitchforks, we've got divot tool, whatever you call it. We've got polos, we've got bucket hats, we've got bag tags, we've got head covers, we've got towels, we've got the good shizer. Shizer happens. Yeah. The players, I do have my fat shirt on today and I'm feeling really great because not in shape, been eating a lot of food, a lot of food and not much exercise. Now, we're going to do this hole, okay, here royal bangpa in but we have to we're going to do this with pacing so we need to find the marker of the distance oh here it is here it is okay so this one is telling us 563 yards so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so we've got 550 yard par five ahead of us probably not in two I don't think I've ever hit it in two. Okay, it's a 550 yard hole. It's not gonna be done in two shots. We're gonna take it easy here, a little three wood up the chute. We're gonna focus on a tree way in the distance. Get all the shizer out of our minds. And we've topped that. You can see the confidence is brimming. I'm brimming with confidence just at the end of the pass. Not, not the greatest. Definitely coming up a little bit because I'm kind of stiff in the lower back, but that's how life goes. I'm wearing my fat shirt. I'm, I've got it fatter because I just eat. Caddy has told me I look like a pig, like a moo, oot, oot. Huh? From moo, eh? Moo. Yeah, moo, oot, oot. 
So, so I've got the fat shirt on, players. Nice to have in this heat, a slightly looser fitting shirt. I do wear size small normally at my store. I created this brand, waterplaygolf.com. You can go check it out, get something for yourself. I have put on a couple pounds, a couple inches here, eating too much great food in Thailand. I miss Thai food in America and I haven't stopped eating it. That's the problem. Players, you're probably wondering, how does someone who's under par hit a ball to the path short of the fairway on a par five? Well, it just happens. That's the way life goes. I might even get worse because I'm super stiff. I really got to start getting exercising. I keep saying it for two years, three years, but it ain't happening. Now, we have no clue what's going on here. We're like at the fairway. And I mean, that's probably gone maximum 150 yards. So I'm guessing we've got 350. It's now a 350 yard par four. That's all that happened. Okay, 350 yard par four. We're gonna try get it to a place we can approach the screen. How much do we want into the green? 350, we wanna hit something maybe 200. Let's go leg hook. We're gonna go six iron. Why do I say six iron? Well, seven wood's not working. Three wood, not working. I mean, if they're not working, three and four iron are certain. Well, I'm not carrying a three today. Four iron is certainly not going to work. Six iron has proven itself to work no matter how bad my form is. So let's hit this and then hopefully we have something like a seven or an eight into the green. See, look at that. I hit the six like John Daly hits the three. Really, probably not that far, a little fattish, but you know, we're going there, we're playing low confidence, yet we're scrambling around and we're playing a great little score here. Now, we're in play again, we're gonna try it on the green. If we don't get on the green, remember we're gonna miss in a place that allows us to get it on the green. Well, players, I can see the 200 yard marker over here. So we are not in great shape right now. So we got, let's say, I mean, this is probably about two, 250, maybe 50 yards there. I'm guessing, I'm not gonna pace it, I'm gonna guess it. So we've got 250, I want to hit it 150 to the 100 yard marker, maybe 95. So we want to go 165. Let's go jet. We're going to hit a seven iron so I can set up a little 56 degree wedge. Fairway, mate. Eh? Yeah. And you're toward the bunker and that's fine. As long as we have a shot in, that's a full shot. You can argue with me till you're blue in the face about being closer to the green always better. I will never agree with you. I play so much golf with people who play with different handicaps. The people you're hearing from who are talking about be closer to the green all the time, these are elite level golfers. These are people spending 12 hours a week just on their friggin' putting, okay? 10 hours just on their friggin' wedges. Of course they're gonna say that. These are people selling you books and and data analytics to gain strokes against a field that doesn't exist. You have to play your game. I like to hit a fuller shot in. Do you like to hit a 30 yard shot? Do you like to hit uphill 50 yard shots to a pin cut tight on the front? Or do you prefer a 90 or 85 yard shot, full shot with something you can land beyond the pin, get it on the green? What do you like? Stop listening to nonsense because you're always going to have people trying to get you to do something. People feel like they're compelled to make you do something as well because they're doing it, because then they feel better about themselves. Have the tenacity, the temerity, the temper to just do your own thing. Now, I don't know what the hell I've done here. Having said all of that, I've still nailed the seven iron way too far. Total miscalculation. I'm guessing this is probably about 60 yards, 55 yards. I don't know how I did that wrong. So there we go. So I've got myself into the position I just exactly didn't want. I wanted to be back there. I... See, I just hate this shot. Look at that. That's going to be like the longest part of all time because I wanted to be back there. But you know what, guys? We have a fantastic caddy, the best caddy in the world, a beautiful day of sun. Of course, all to myself, what more do I want in life? What more do I want? Honestly, what more do I want? Let's go make this putt. We make a par. If we don't, we make a bogey. GTFO. What a life. Oh, right on line, players. Look at that. Right on line. Just needed to get, just needed to probably hit it a bit. 
further toward the center of the sweet spot, maybe another millimeter or two, and that would have been right in the back of the jar. What an easy game.